Hi, it's Jan Howell and welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be going over rotary cutting. I'll be going over some useful tips for beginners and for those of you who just want to brush up and maybe learn something new about rotary cutting. Using a rotary cutter can make such a big difference in your sewing and quilting experience. It makes things so much easier and quicker. They're a great tool for any seamstress or crafter. I'll be going over rotary cutters, different types, rotary blades, I'll be going over rulers and mats. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's begin by going over the rotary cutter itself. Now there are a lot of different varieties and types and brands out there. I have my share, believe me, over the years, tried several different kinds and you're going to find what works for you. I'm going to share what I have found are the best and give you some tips on that. Rotary cutters help get you a nice square edge if you're cutting out strips of fabric and they're also good for cutting out curves. They just give you a nice clean edge. They even work on knit fabrics and they're really nice to use on very sheer fabrics to help you get that clean edge that you're looking for. Rotary cutters come in different sizes. There's a small 28 millimeter, a 45 millimeter, and a 60 millimeter. So this 45 millimeter is a good generic size to get when you're just starting. It's good for all kinds of things. And then I like this small one for curves and cutting around patterns. And there's also different kinds of blades. This particular blade, this wavy blade, is, is like using a pinking shear pair of scissors. It will help with fraying. I don't use it much, but it is available. Let's talk about the blades. They are very, very sharp. It's very important that you take care and do some things to prevent cutting yourself. A cut can be really nasty. So make sure when you're finished with your cut, pull the cover back up so that you're not accidentally, just even touching it can cut yourself. Now I have found a rotary cutter that has a built-in safety mechanism, which I probably really need because like I say, I sometimes forget to put that cover on. This is a retractable blade. And so when you push it and when you cut, the blade is out. And then when you're finished, you release it and that blade automatically pulls in. And you can also, there's a safety feature where a safety button where you can push that and it won't let you even if it's bumped or that blade will not come out. I love this rotary cutter. It's probably one of the best and the one of my go-to cutters that I use all the time now. And I'll put the link in the description below if you're interested in finding that. It's important that you keep your blades sharp and change them out occasionally. How do you know when to change your blade? Well, it's going to start not cutting. It will as well. You'll have to do repetitive strokes to get it to cut fully. You might have little skips in the, the cutting. You will know. So let's go over how to change the blade. There are screws on all of these on the back, which you will unscrew. So when you change the blade, if it does have a safety feature on it, I'm going to go ahead and engage that safety button so that it's not coming out or moving when I'm changing the blade. Just release that screw. If you hold that, you can undo that. Now it's important that we keep these in order. So I'm going to put that screw down. I'm going to take off this little washer and set that next to it. And then I'll put that there and drop my blade and put that there. Now these blades, when you're handling them, you need to be very careful because they are so sharp. And one thing you don't want to be throwing these into the trash, just randomly throwing them in the trash because you never know where they're going to be. You never know if someone's going to be going through the trash and if they were or whatever, or just handling the trash could get a serious cut. 
what I like to do is to take the old blade and put it back in a case. Now this one has two new ones in it, so I don't want to get them confused with a new one and an old one. I'll take a Sharpie and write used. And then I'll put it back in here underneath these new ones. The old blades can come in handy for cutting paper, cardboard, or other things that you wouldn't want to use a brand new blade on. Another tip I'll share is when you put a new one in, a new blade in, I like to write the date so that then I'll know how old this particular blade is. Let's put it back together. Take this piece, carefully pick up your blade, place it on top of that, insert it into the hole, take the yellow disc, place it on top of the right side, and take this little washer type thing. It's, as, as you can see, there's like a little scoop. It's kind of cupped. This washer is kind of cupped up and we're going to place the flatter side down till it fits right there. And then this is really important that you're putting the screw back on. We want to end up with the flat part. So there's a flat and then you can see how you can see the indentations of the screw in there. We want that to be placed down. Now that we've learned how to change the blade and to be very cautious while you're doing it, let's talk about the mats. Again, you're going to find a lot of different varieties of cutting mats. And most, there's the self-healing mat and there's the PVC mat. And you might not be aware of that yet. The most common mat that you'll see is a self-healing mat. And what those are, they're mats that when you cut into the mat, it's a softer uh, material, but it eventually, after cutting on the mat, it doesn't seal up again, and you have these the fibers of the material down into the mat, and you'll eventually have to replace it because you cannot get those fibers out of those cuts. So this is an older mat of mine, and as you can see, there's these pieces of um, material down in these cuts, and it's bumpy. This particular mat has two sides. It's starting to crack here. Eventually, you'll have to replace it. I have found that these mats, if they get any kind of heat on it, like I had my um, wool ironing pad on here, and it's still the heat went through and warped the mat, which I don't advise you to do is to iron on your mat, even if you have something underneath it. I have a new mat that I really like, and it is made of PVC. Now, you're wondering why wouldn't you want a self-healing mat? Well, I'm gonna show you the differences and give you some pros and cons for having this and using this PVC mat. And this new mat is called the Big Mat Rotary Cutter and Mat, and I will put the link in the description below to their Etsy shop. But I ordered one and love it. They have all different sizes um, from this. This is a 57 inch mat, which you know I have a big table in my sewing room, and it covers, it's, 50, it's 57 inches by, let's see, 33 inches. So you have a lot of workspace. I put my sewing machines on here, here and it's good to go. It's reversible. There's a, it's plain white on the other side. The numbers in one corner start from zero and then start from zero on the other side. So when you're doing a corner cut, it's really handy to have that measurement go out and know so you can measure from both sides, if that makes sense. It's easier on your blades. Your blades don't dull as quickly. And they recommend using a thin, the thinner the blade, the better. And they recommend using the Ulfa brand um, blades, which I use already. 
and they also recommend that you loosen the blade a little bit so it's not so tight and then you don't have to put as much pressure the cuts aren't as deep and it works really well when you do cut on this mat you will see cutting lines in there and a little bit of a raised surface happens when you make those cuts but no worries because they they send you a scraper um, this plastic scraper that when you get those raised surfaces all you do is just scrape over those cut lines and they flatten right out so it's a good cutting mat they even have this small 16 by 10 cutting mat which is really handy for those those of you who quilt to have that you can travel with it you can put it by your ironing board when you're just making small cuts so a lot of options there for a cutting mat so one more thing that i didn't mention about this particular cutting mat it's based in the usa it's a family business and i like to support those people and it's a good product let's go over the rulers now and again there's going to be all different types of rulers different widths different lengths different markings i have this square that has one inch me measurements on it it also has a diagonal measurement and this one has different um, angles great for quilting and this is one of my thinner rulers the thing about rotary cutting you do not want to cut on a table you have to have a mat otherwise you're going to ruin your table or you're going to ruin your rotary cutter so a cutting mat is essential you'll need something to cut against if you're cutting a straight line and there's all kinds of different rulers out there I'm going to go over a few cutting tips and show you how nice a rotary cutter is and the different ways that you can use it. So when you buy a piece of fabric at the fabric store, if you're making a project like a blanket or something that you need a square edge or you're making a quilt and you need to make sure that you have a square edge, your fabric that comes from the store most likely does is not going to have a straight edge when they cut it. So a way to square off that edge line up the the selvage edges and that is the edge that comes on the bolt that's finished and sometimes it'll have a mark or just some plain um, when the print the print will end and the cut edge is of course the the cut edge that they cut with the fabric at this with the scissors and it's probably even starting to fray so line up your selvage edges And you want to make sure that it's not crooked or ski wampus. So if this was, I go over a lot of, I go over this in my tutorials, but if it, it was, the edges are even, but it's still not lined up with the grain of the fabric, you're going to have a little bit of a twisting going on in the fabric. And I hope you can see how funky that is at the edge. Start with your selvage, and that's looking good there. And my ruler is long enough, but if it wasn't, if you don't have a big enough mat, you could fold edges down so it lines up with the fold, and then make your cut undo your safety so the blade is right against the edge of the ruler you want your fingers out of the way of course now a lot of the times you'll get you'll cut your fabric and right at the end here at the fold there it's still connected so to avoid that start cutting off the fabric and then continue all the way off the fabric so that you're making sure that you're getting the ends. It squares off your fabric really nicely. This is a woven fabric, but it also is really nice for cutting on knit fabrics. 
So if you can see how these ends are curling up, when you're using a pair of scissors, it's kind of hard to keep those ends flat. But if you have a rotary cutter, the ruler just helps keep that fabric down flat while you make the cut. You're not going to get that straight of a even cut with a pair of scissors. Well, you might, but it's, it's very difficult. Not only are they good for using on straight edges, you can also use a curved edge and cutting around a, a pattern of sorts. So obviously I wouldn't be making a pair of fingerless mittens out of this t-shirt fabric, but I'm just going to show you how you can use the rotary cutter to cut out a pattern piece. I like if you have curved edges to use the smaller rotary cutter. You could also use a big rotary cutter and I'll show you some tips about cutting around corners with the bigger one. And going around a corner, these cornered, going around these curved edges that can be difficult with a pair of scissors. The higher you lift up the end of the rotary cutter, the easier it is to get that curve. See how nice that is? Let's say we wanted to make a curve here. Lift up the, the end of the cutter so you can easily make those curves. A lot quicker and easier and smoother and nice. Doing that with the scissors would be a lot more challenging. And as you have seen with my other piecing, scrap piecing, just to make those cuts so quick. Love it. Another safety tip is to always cut away from your body. And there's times when you're going to be tempted because you're in a hurry to maybe cut towards you or around a corner or something. Don't do it because you never know when you might slip up and in a hurry and cut your finger or something. So keep your fingers out of the way, cut away from your body. So there are a few little accessories that you can buy to assist you in your cutting. This is a ruler that has a rounded edge, which again would be nice if you could just use that small cutter. And this Big Mat company has a few accessories that I really like that can be helpful. Some of you may have experienced when you're trying to cut a long cut like this, the, the ruler will shift on you while you are cutting, which is very frustrating because then you have to recut and waste fabric. This ruler has a raised edge, kind of like a T-square on it. It came that way. And so you can line it up against the edge of your cutting mat and slide it, which is nice. Or you can order this ruler stabilizer, which comes with a sticky back and they recommend the first time you use it because it is very tacky is to rub it on your pants or some fabric first to kind of de tack it a little bit so it's not crazy sticky and then you can apply it either to the edge of your mat to make a t-square just like this ruler has already or you can place it on your mat anywhere let's say you're making an angle cut a repetitive angle cut you can put it there You can just pull that off and let me show you how it would work on the edge of the ruler to make sure that that is exactly flat lift up your ruler then it's going to be exactly straight then i can apply that to the edge of my mat put my fabric underneath there apply pressure so my mat doesn't slide so we're pushing it slightly forward and then that will and down and that will keep it from shifting 
as I make those cuts. That's one little attachment that comes in handy. I hope that was helpful and informative. Make sure you're subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And if you don't have a rotary cutter yet, I think you need to get one. It, they're not expensive. They really do make your sewing, quilting, and crafting a lot more enjoyable and easier. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment in the comment below and I'll get back to you. Have a wonderful day. Have fun sewing. Have fun crafting. And we'll see you next time.